Okay, so we'll start off by installing the Chai HTTP extension, uh, importing it into our test code. So just as before, we need to import Chai and then we need Chai HTTP and tell Chai to use this module uh, and then import our server file. So this is very similar to before, it's just that we additionally include our HTTP dependency. Um, and then we write a test. Tests look fairly similar to before. So we have this describe to set up a test suite and we have it to describe a single test. Uh, and then we, we use the same chai expect as we had before, but now we use different methods that help us to make a uh, request. So we have test suites and tests as we did before. Then we can use chai HTTP to run a request. So you see here it says chai.request, the URL dot get, which path we want to address, and then dot end sends the request. Uh, and in this dot end, we wait for a response and then we do our assertions. So for example, uh, we can say the response should have status code 200. The get request should have been successful. Uh, since requests are asynchronous, so they may take some time, we have to use this done function. Otherwise your tests will always pass uh, and you will not realize that something went wrong. So that's very important. Let's try this. Um, as I said, we'll go into this basic express application we had before. We have two get endpoints slash and slash test. Both of them return 200 and a uh, text message in the first case and a JSON object in the second one. Uh, and we'll just try to test that. Now, of course, there's not much logic here, so there's not much to test, but it's a good starting point. So, um, I'll just copy some code from my slides. We need the HTTP module. So we tell uh, Node to import that and then we tell Chai to use it. Then we import our Express application and we run, write a test. And as on the slides, we can do chai.request, then we need the URL. Then we say we want to do a get request and here's the path to slash. Uh, and then we send it. And now in here, uh, we have to have a callback function And now I can test my response here. So I can say expect response to have status 200. Uh, and as I said before, if I run this without done, it will probably just pass. So we have to include the done statement here to tell Chai that only now the test is completed. Uh, let's quickly check whether I've done everything that's in here. Well, this looks reasonable. And now we can run our test. So we can do slash node modules mocker uh, bin mocker and then run the test. And you see that it passes. And as I discussed in the other testing lectures, when you have a passing test, always check that you can actually fail it. So if I do, for example, 201 here, the test should not pass and you see that it fails. So this means that the test is doing something. We can similarly check uh, if I would forget the done statement here, then our test would pass. Uh, but if I now change something, it would probably still pass. No, I get an error, okay. Uh, but the test itself actually still passes. So test passes and then I get an exception. So be careful with that you always try to actually break your tests so that you see that the testing framework works. Okay, so this is what we can do. There are a number of other options. We'll look into that later. Um, let's write a second test for our second endpoint. So 
The second endpoint also returns 200, so we could check for that. Uh, so now we go through the, to the other URL uh, and have status. And you see that it runs as well. And same as before, if I change the status code to anything else, it will fail. Uh, the same works with other methods. So assume that I change this get request into a post request. Uh, I return the same stuff. Then I can, instead of get, I can just write post here. And unless I've forgotten something, this should just as well run. Uh, it says get here because of the string up here. So I would have to change that. So this works just as well. So this is sort of the first test we have done. It's not very useful yet. It just checks that 200 comes back, but it's a good start. Uh, we actually test our endpoints. Now we can look into the different methods, the different options we have. Uh, so as I've already shown you, you can use all the different HTTP method verbs here. So we can do a post request, a delete request. We can of course change the path. So we could, for example, append an ID if we want to delete a specific item, a specific object. Um, and we have other things we can do. Uh, useful options are, for example, to set the header. Uh, so here we set the content type header to JSON. We essentially tell the application we are going to send you a JSON object. Uh, similarly, and that might be useful for the fourth assignment, we, we can set the authorization header and then include something there. So that just causes uh, the HTTP request to include specific headers. Uh, and then finally, we can send uh, an object. So if we have a post request, we might want to include something in the request body. Uh, and if we do dot send, and we just put a regular JavaScript object in here, then uh, it will be sent to the server. Uh, and then as discussed, the important thing here is that we actually call the done. We can check the status code. We have already checked that. Um, we can check the headers. We can check the body to have uh, specific methods. And this is just whatever comes back here is just a JavaScript object. So we can test different things on that. Let's look a bit at the different options we have. Um, maybe we start with the actual headers and the different verbs. So let's assume that um, we change our endpoint and we say we have a variable. Um, our resources are, let's say, users, and the endpoint is called users. Um, <coughs> let me say in the beginning it's a new array, and I'll just quickly write some kind of method that is not very good, but it might work. Uh, and I'll just copy some stuff from my to-do application from before. So let's let's use the body parser here, uh, and now we just write some kind of post request. that actually does something. Uh, let's not check for anything. We just do this very naive. We just expect the user to send everything that's useful. Um, so we just create a new user. We add it to our array. Uh, just ignore the notes for now. And we say next user ID is that and then we return 201. So now the uh, the response should actually be 201 and the JSON object. We can also do one check maybe if there is no uh, if there is no username, then we send back 400 uh, just to have something, some alternative to test. So, uh, 
Um, now we can write a test for that. So we just do post slash users. So we want to do a request to users. Um, and we'll just leave it at that and see what happens. And now the endpoint test fails because it says we got status code 400 back. Um, and that's because this is the case. So the, the username is not defined. We haven't sent anything to the server, so we get 400 back. Uh, that's actually an okay test, but what we might want to do is um, add something. So first of all, we're actually sending JSON to the server. We want to send a JSON object. So we set the right header. Um, and the way you often see this is that these methods are just under each other. So we tell the server here is a JSON object and then we actually need to send something. Uh, so that's the, the next thing. We want to send an object. Now we can just test this. For example, we can say the username uh, is Grisha and what else is there? The age. Yes, 10. Uh, now we send this and then we expect if this works, we should get 201 back. The server should send us 201 created. Uh, so let's try this. Uh, this seems to be passing and we can add uh, another test that tests the, the failure case. So we can say if we, for example, skip the username, then we should get 400 back. We should get a client error. And this also seems to work. Uh, there's just something I have messed up on the server. So I should actually fix my code here. That's the return. No, I don't get any uh, errors. And as before, please try whether you can make the test fails fail. If you cannot, then something is wrong. Uh, in this case, both of my tests failed after I changed the expected value of the endpoint, uh, the status. So this seems to be working. Okay, now we have made requests. This works, um, but our checks here are not very useful yet. We only check the response, we only check the status, um, but there are a whole lot of other things we might want to check. And that's here, these response assertions. So we have done the status, that's okay. Now we want to go into detail and actually look at the response. What has the server sent us back? Uh, we can check the header. So here, for example, this uh, check would check that the response is in text format. Uh, this is something we can do for our first test. So if you look at the first endpoint here, here we just sent text back. Um, and so we can go up here and actually say the status should be 200 and the header should contain text. Um, this will probably fail now. Yes, because the header does not contain text plain, but actually text HTML char set UTF-8. Um, one thing we can do is we can actually use regular expressions here. We could do, um, now I have to find the right one, but I think, here we go. Uh, now this is something you'll have to Google, but this one essentially means that the content type header starts with text. Uh, so it's some kind of text response. We don't know exactly which one. So let's see. This now passes again. That's great. Uh, and now we can continue. We can go into more details. We can actually look at what it is the server has sent back. Check what's in the body, for example. Um, or in our case here, uh, if it's a, if it's just a text response, then uh, we can just check it with to have text. And what are we expecting? We expect hello world exclamation mark. So I'll put that in here and I'll see it doesn't pass. Um, 
not sure what happened now why this failed again maybe the text response is not correct so we'll need to look <coughs> ah yeah This is what I want to check. So the text response equals hello world. And now it passes. And if I change anything, if I change the response to hello, then the test would fail. So it's actually checking that it's correct. So that's what we can do here. Um, now we can go down to our, uh, to our post request. And the first thing we can actually check is uh, apart from the status is the content type. So again, we can uh, search for is this JSON. And the right content type for JSON is application slash JSON. Um, that's a lot of work. There is a short version for that in Chai HTTP and is simply to be JSON. So then the library takes care of that the response is JSON. Let's put that down here as well. Um, no, down here we actually, do we have a JSON response? Yes, we do. So now both of these tests should still pass. Yes, so now we have checked the status code. We also have checked that the body is in the right format. And now we can again go uh, into what exactly the body is. Let's have a look at the slides. Um, so as already discussed, this is a regular JavaScript object. So you, so you can check all sorts of things on that. Um, for example, we could, uh, and this is exactly as before as in the other tests we did so far, we can just check certain properties of that. Uh, to be a object, what is it? see whether I remember this correctly. Um, yes. So now we first check is the response in JSON and then we check is the body actually an object. If I would just send back a number, this would not work. Uh, we can check individual properties. So here we actually expect that we get a user back and the user has a username, age and ID. So we can check this uh, to have property username. So now we check that there is a username. Um, again, let's run this, still passes. And now we can even check that the username equals exactly what I put in, nothing else. Uh, so now we check, in summary, we check, is this a JSON response? If yes, is the body an object? Does the body have property username? equals to Grisha. Now we can do the same with all the other properties. Uh, so we can check the age, 10 we said, and we can check that ID also exists. We cannot check the value because the server generates the value. We don't know what's coming back here. And now this worked. Um, there is also a way to check uh, how many Elements are in object. We'll see what I expect that one. Uh, remember that one. I think it is like this. Let's have a look. Nope. Look at the documentation. There is 
nothing in here so we'll just uh, have a look at my slides because I probably have that here somewhere yes okay it's the objects dot keys almost So now we check that there are only three properties in my object, nothing else. And it finally works. So now if I would go to the server and I would actually add something else, I would for example add the property test 5, uh, then this last part of the test will fail. It will tell me there are actually four elements in your object, you only expect three. So that's also something I can check if I want to check that the object has exactly these properties and nothing on top of that. Okay, so that's uh, essentially what I can do here. Let's quickly do the rest, uh, do this for the failure case. Uh, so in the failure case, I also get a JSON object back, but there is only uh, the error message in there and nothing else. So I expect that there is exactly one element in my object. Um, and it says no username defined, so I can check my error exactly. Uh, okay, and this works, so I've successfully tested my backend. Um, now let's quickly discuss the, the rest of this. Uh, what I haven't done is check the state of the server or the database. So. I have done my post request, I have gotten the user back, but I've never checked whether the server has actually saved it anyhow. Uh, in the case what i just shown you, uh, it would have been in the server, in the local variables. If I would use a database, check in the database. Um, and this really depends on what kind of testing you do. So there are two, there, there's something in between, but essentially you distinguish white box testing, where you check the entire system, you check the internals, uh, you check whether the server has the right state um, and there is black box testing where you test the uh, entire backend just as a black box. You only look at what's going in, what's coming out, you do not check what's going on inside and that's really what we have done here. Um, so white box testing is you test what's going in, you test what's coming out and you test whether the internal state is correct. And black box testing is the same, you just skip the last step. So you just treat this as a system which you cannot look inside. And that's exactly what we will do in assignment four, for example. Uh, so you ha don't have to check what's going on inside the system, you just have to check the response. And that's a very common testing approach. Okay, so in summary, um, we have done endpoint testing to test individual HTTP requests in an API because those are not function calls, so it's not regular unit testing, but we actually want to test HTTP requests and responses. Um, they are really concerned with checking that the right response is coming back when you send the request. Something I have not gone into, but this is of course depending on the time. I think Mocha and Chai have a default timeout of two seconds, for example. So if your HTTP request would take more than two seconds to be processed, you would get a failed test. So this can be tricky, um, it's something to think about. If you do black box testing, you only look at in and outputs, request and response, exactly like we did it right now. Uh, if we wanted to do white box testing, we would also have to check that the system is in the correct state. Uh, so for example, if we go into our code, we would have to check that the array and the next user ID are set correctly afterwards. This is something we didn't do here. Uh, this is also something that is not that straightforward because you somehow need to have access to the system, even if the variables are hidden from you or so. Okay, so that was lecture 21. Uh, the next one, 22, is now a summary lecture of the second part of the course. So summarizing everything we have done there, uh, looking a bit at what is missing maybe, and then there might be time for repetition. And there we need your input, so if you have anything we should repeat, we should do additionally, please comment on Piazza. Thanks for listening. <laughs>